It's to back here in South Africa, rather. The African National Congress is expected to conclude its three-day NEC today. The meeting is focusing on several issues, including next year's elections, of course, the BRICS summit coming up in August, and uh, persistent power cuts. Earlier, the party briefed the media on what came out of that meeting. And uh, let's speak to political analyst Lukona Mguni now, who joins us live to unpack what happened over the, the weekend. Lukona, thank you very much for your time. For me, what was interesting, Lukona, is that, uh, uh, you know, in the 13 years I've been a journalist, um, whenever I covered an ANC NEC, it was never filled with so many press briefings as if we at conference. Could this be because of the silly season um, approaching uh, next elections and maybe a PR type of strategy? Well, Maseko, uh, good afternoon and uh, good afternoon to uh, the viewers. Um, it is quite important, I think, for the ANC to try and rethink how it communicates with society because over the years, uh, perhaps <clears throat> what hasn't worked is that it has become too distant uh, to its members, to its voters and to society generally. You would know that the ANC conceives of itself as a leader of society and uh, because of that they probably want to be much more in touch and to appear as though they've got full control over issues you'll remember uh, there was an nec not too long ago where uh, different uh, people even david makura coming out to present a framework mm. that the nec was endorsing in terms of how they should approach coalition uh, politics uh, particularly in municipalities but i think with a great anticipation that a province like Gauteng. Uh, could be under a coalition government, KwaZulu-Natal could be under a coalition government, and possibly nationally there could be. So the NC has been trying to prepare itself and I, I think trying to pivot how it communicates with society. Whether that works or not uh, will depend in terms of how uh, the voters and its members receive the message and the seriousness of the message um, and that it doesn't just end at being a PR exercise, as you know, uh, the president himself, uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, had a, a bit of engagements uh, with uh, uh, the media uh, in the sidelines of this, uh, you know, uh, National Executive Committee meeting, something that's quite unusual as well, because what has been unusual, but now has become practice is that when he closes uh, the National Executive Committee, the media is, tends to be allowed yes. and it takes that statement uh, live and so on. So there has been some evolution in terms of how NEC meetings are conducted, I think, under the presidency of uh, uh, Ramaphosa. And uh, that might be part of trying to reconnect the ANC or re-embed the ANC within society. But also, as you'd know, Maseko, as a journalist, is that when they have something, uh, the media tends to flock there, in, in yes. irrespective of what they are going to say. <laughs> and they are probably taking advantage of that, you know, owning the weekend uh, in terms of occupying space within the media. Mm, they definitely wanted to be, uh, you know, the most spoken about. That's why I thought maybe this is, uh, you know, one of those perfect uh, PR stunts. But Lukona, it was also about the topics that they chose to speak to the media about throughout the course of the NEC, um, you know, meeting weekend, economic transformation, you know, things that are a thorn on the side of many South Africans, the load shedding problems as well. So it was quite interesting in terms of the topics they chose to, sp to speak to us about. No, certainly. And I mean, um, um, Balula as well, centering crime and uh, safety issues um, as being part of the key topical things that they are dealing with. And I think it's about demonstrating to society that uh, we get the pain points uh, that citizens are going through and the things that are choking uh, development in society. The, 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 the issue, however, is whether or not the words will meet, will meet and match with the deeds uh, will there be different conduct of ANC deployees in municipalities um, in how they govern? Uh, will they make sure that there is more service delivery and less corruption uh, over time? Uh, will they make sure uh, in the national executive, uh, in cabinet, uh, that they are not fighting and there's no policy discord uh, that is happening and so on? So uh, it's one thing to try and speak the language. ESCOM has been an issue for a very, very long time, and there's no doubt that uh, there is some confluence between ANC's misgovernance and its appetites for fundraising through illicit means and the collapse of certain uh, mm. processes within ESCOM, particularly insofar as procurement is concerned and all of that. So they can't just speak and say, now we need to solve the issue of uh, energy and then, you know, sort out ele electricity in South Africa. Uh, but then there's still, you know, uh, uh, wranglings that are, you know, uh, uh, being reported between, you know, whether it's the Minister of uh, Minerals, uh, uh, Resources.
resources and energy and the president and the future of you know green energy and so on so i think uh, the, the the anc must not underestimate uh, how society uh, has a far higher demand for it than any other political party so they must not speak in general terms about these issues they've been in power for 29 years and society is saying but this has crumbled under your watch crime has exacerbated under your watch these are the social ills in society as a result of your neglect um, of, of certain development uh, initiatives. And therefore, um, I think that while they try and do the media relations uh, kind of exercise, uh, they need to have a serious in-house conversation about their own conduct and the conduct of their deploys and how they are going to behave differently and possibly better in how they govern. Mm. And, you know, just lastly, Lukona, another topic that they looked at, which I found to be interesting, was the local government topic. And under there, they looked at immigration, they looked at home affairs. That's peace and stability. It has to do with, for instance, even, um, you know, the fact that we have an issue of illegal mining in South Africa, etc. But uh, the fact that they also spoke about the no confidence votes, uh, destabilizing many municipalities and how they're looking at changing uh, the law when it comes to what you're allowed to do in council and coalition governance. That was also quite interesting that they looked at that, especially with a lot of analysts saying next year we might see ourselves at a coalition on a national level. No, certainly, Maseko, that was important, uh, led by uh, the Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, uh, Tembinka Dimeng, mm. uh, yesterday morning, uh, that press briefing. And she also had the you know privilege of uh, reflecting on her own um, experience as the president of Salga and what they try to do in terms of putting together a coalition's framework and where they are. But I think we are trying to address the wrong things. Um, because if you talk to Salga now, they will tell you there are about 67 municipalities that are under coalitions in the country. And they will say about 50 of those are stable, 17 of those give a number of problems. And uh, there are a number of iterations that are being discussed in terms of how to stabilize uh, those coalition uh, governments. There will be a meeting, I think, led by the deputy president uh, in the next month or so uh, on how to best stabilize coalition uh, uh, governments. But the, the, some of the ideas that they are trying to come up with are not possibly constitutional. For example, they talk a lot about thresholds and saying that perhaps you need to make sure that uh, parties with 1% uh, or 2% uh, are the ones that then get to be represented uh, in any legislative body. But however, I think our constitution is quite clear that it demands elections that result in general proportionality in terms of outcomes. And yeah. therefore, the issue of thresholds in South Africa might not be a solution. I think we need to talk about the foundations of what has gone wrong in the politics, particularly in the metros that are highly contestable. So your city of Johannesburg, city of Tswane, Nelson Mandela Bay, um, and, and so on. And one of the things that I think needs to be looked at, which is still a hypothesis at this point, is that the city of Etiaguini is actually stable, uh, be, not because it's, it's not a coalition government, but because in actual fact how the city gets constituted is that you start with an executive committee and not an executive mayor. So you've got 10 seats in the executive committee. They are proportionately uh, given to political parties as a, an outcome of uh, how they performed in the election. And then a mayor out of that 10 is elected, unlike with most of the metros, which have an executive mayoral system. So you elect the mayor, and then the mayor appoints M M M M MMCs, um, yeah. me uh, members of the mayoral committee. And therein lies the problem, I think, because it's always a red race in terms of yes. who will then make it into the mayor's committee if we change this mayor. So patronage networks and so on. So we need to think very carefully about what is going wrong in the destabilized municipalities and how do we then correct it? But something has gone wrong with the politics, uh, the patronage, you know, the chase for resources. It's an election mm -hmm. year next year, and we tend to see irregular expenditure, Maseko, uh, increasing in municipalities ahead of an election year because it's clear that the incumbents then try and fundraise uh, through certain contracts uh, within those municipalities for them to have kitties that they can then use as a war chest for the election. So there's a lot that is going wrong, and I don't think that uh, it's just about the technical ideas that must come out, but we need yeah. to have an honest conversation about the state of our politics in the country and what is going wrong and how that they are being used to illicitly mm. draw some 
uh, finances out of the system uh, to then prop up uh, political campaigns. Mm, because otherwise we uh, still see the continuation of that term that was used a lot in December, the horse trading uh, within the MMC, uh, you know, the executives of the mayor's office. Thank you very much for speaking to us, political analyst Luko Namguni and the host of uh, your 12 o'clock uh, current affairs show uh, here on Sundays.